Greetings, members, one and all of the Salivation Nation. Buy silver now or later. Let's explore. Yes, this was an article sent to me by Silver Stacking Mama. And uh, it is one of many commentary pieces that we have been seeing since we have witnessed silver rising um, over the over the months. And most of us, including myself, feel that uh, 2021 is going to be very bullish for the metal. But typically, what happens, like clockwork, is people are raising the alarm bells. You better buy silver very quickly before it goes up even more. I've seen it time and time again. And uh, so I want to approach this uh, with that understanding and, uh, and kind of provide a little bit of a balanced view to this type of alarmism because that can get us into trouble when we are accumulating precious metals. Uh, you know, I'm not one of these type of people to say to not not buy silver, don't buy it. But I do believe that we need to be very cautious and careful, uh, no matter what the price action is. And um, and so there's different ways to approach this, and there's different ways to buy silver, as we'll discuss here as we review this article here by Peter Krauth and in this commentary piece here. In many ways, most of us can't wait to put 2020 behind us and call it last year. We've experienced a once-in-a-century global pandemic infecting almost 80 million people. Lockdowns caused businesses to shudder and soaring unemployment with massive economic consequences. If you dig a little deeper, other costs, including soaring debts and deficits worldwide, we're approaching the unfathomable $280 trillion in global debt. Governments and central banks have facilitated tens of trillions in stimulus and spending this year alone. It's far from over. That's for sure. The U.S. Uh, is now, uh, well, it's now stuck. This $900 billion stimulus bill, the president has uh, actually threatened to veto it. Until unless we give more for the average American and less for um, global handouts to other nations. Um, but anyways, this is promising new stimulus checks. Right now it stands at 600 bucks, boosting unemployment, a small business aid, and um, funds for schools and university. It's a little wonder that some asset classes have been riding this wave, not the least of which is silver. And looking ahead, the metal appears prime for another great year in 2021. So we have seen that stocks have gained with the S&P 500 ahead about 13%. Uh, we did see the um, Dow Jones Industrial Average surpass 30,000. Um, NASDAQ is up some 17%. Precious metals, investors fared even better. Gold has gained around 23%. Yet silver outshone all of those with an outstanding 44%. Um, and, uh, but that is only on paper. And we'll talk about that later too. The author thinks that gold's cheaper cousin is set for another year of outsized gains. <clears throat> um, Peter believes that we're entering in a perfect storm for silver. Not only the central bank balance sheets exploding, but major economies are passing stimulus bills and just a few years ago would have been near scandalous. Uh, what's more, they're doing so not just with relative ease, but outright encouragement. Um, yes, it's a free-for-all for sure. If you watch uh, Rand Paul's um, epic speech on the Senate floor about this, um, it reminded me of his father's speech, his uh, farewell speech in the, in the Congress uh, or in the House of Representatives before he retired. The Fed's balance sheet was $4.2 trillion at the start of the year. Today, it's $7.3 trillion and growing. Uh, this year, the U.S. federal deficit will triple that of 2019. And here we can see the cumulative budget de deficits have been larger in recent years. And obviously, 2020 is the uh, exception with that massive climb upwards there. And really, it seems like Nobody cares until there's inflation. 
And uh, that will, could be the dark horse of 2021. He's saying it will. I'm saying it could be. We don't know. It's, it's been amazing how inflation has escaped us in recent memory because a lot of this money that's been pushed out, even more recently we've seen, um, it's essentially been sitting in banks uh, and just there. Um, it's, it's not really been distributed. The velocity of money is not following the digitization and printing thereof. Um, and that's something to keep in mind uh, as we head into 2021. It's about the velocity of money uh, in circulation and that flood of new money into uh, the economy is what's going to cause it to go. But everybody feels good about having more money out there. Uh, it's just not flowing. And so I think that is what is boosting. I think that is the key to what keeps this modern monetary theory um, uh, keeping everything quote afloat at least temporarily it's a false sense of security um, but make no mistake here we will see uh, it turn the other way uh, because they can't do this forever for sure um, and gold and silver have been sensing that in the marketplace especially since massive stimulus programs and a fed promise of near zero rates until at least 2023 um, appeared. Not only is silver demonstrating its ability to hedge against uh, economic instability, it's also flexing its industrial metal muscle. 50% of silver is consumed in industry and another 10% alone in photovoltaics and solar technologies. Factor in exploding investment demand and the metals outlook is robust. Once more, silver's technical picture is providing a terrific setup. So if you look, want to get into this a little bit, because, you know, I'm not really a fan of technical analysis. I respect it. It's kind of fascinating, but I think they leave out a lot of stuff. But let's see what it says here. The gold to silver ratio is used to, to gauge the asset silver's relative value against gold. In March, the ratio spiked over 125. Uh, it took 125 ounces of silver to buy one ounce of gold. That's an historic high, which quickly reverted um, for sure. Here we can see the chart to see that. Um, it bounced around between um, 50 and 70. Typically, well, that was over the past 20 years. And usually, when the ratio runs up uh, above 80 and reverses, it tends to run down to 50 or even lower. Currently, the gold to silver ratio is near 73 and has been trending down. That's what it does during precious metals bull markets. I think it's has further to fall, even if gold moves higher, which is likely. As a result, silver's gains will easily outpace gold in 2021. I do believe that will be the case too. Um, however, we have to keep in mind, as I, and as I have said as well for quite some time, because of the diversity of silver in the industrial markets and the increase in usage of the metal for photovoltaics, um, we may continue to still see high gold to silver ratios. Uh, in other words, and what I've been noticing um, anecdotally um, is when gold goes down, silver goes down a lot more. When gold goes up, silver goes up somewhat more. In other words, it can never really catch up to what we believe is the quote normal gold to silver ratio. If we look and see here, since 2011, the gold to silver ratio has steadily increased, save for this time here, where it kind of reset itself around 2016. We saw the prices kind of um, jump up there, $21 silver, what have you. And, um, and uh, at that point, silver was outperforming gold in those recent climbs. But since, the gold to silver ratio has been an upward trajectory. It has a correction now. But it tends to, it's starting that kind of climb up again through that sawtooth pattern here. Um, and then the silver chart is confirming bullish price action with these, what's known as these wedges here. Tested support at $23 several times since September. And it's just broken out above resistance. It's now trading well above its 200 day and 50 day moving averages. And the latter has just turned up. The RSI and MACD momentum indicators are both trending higher and are not yet overbought. All of these bullish are bullish signals. Uh, layer that on top of the seasonal trend for silver 
it becomes difficult to paint a more favorable outlook. And uh, so there it, that is with that seasonal trend. And silver tends to perform particularly well from December through February. Um, so that's how he sees it here. And he says, ignore the noise in silver prices. In other words, one day, uh, you know, it could go down pretty substantially and, and the bulls might be out for a day or two, but it's going to bounce back. Uh, he says that one day traders buy the rumor, the next they sell the news. Instead, we need to focus on the bigger trend. In other words, the longer term. Silver has already more than doubled since March. It's in a bull market. Well, but the thing about it, you look back at March when that ratio got the 125 to 1. That dip was only on paper. In other words, uh, you could, the when before that big dip, silver was trading, I want to say somewhere around $17, $18 uh, an ounce um, before COVID really became the big deal that it is. And what happened? Well, you could buy a silver eagle for about $20, $21 an ounce. Um, well, when silver dipped down to below $12 an ounce, well, you could buy silver eels for right around $20, $21 an ounce. Uh, the, the premiums skyrocketed during that time, and the physical market um, did not reflect what we were seeing in the paper and the digital market. So if you are trading these within uh, as ETFs, you know, yes, it doubled. But for those of us physical stackers, we saw nothing of the sort, not one iota of a dip in silver. Uh, we've seen it essentially go up because of these premiums. And by the way, those premiums were all the way around. Uh, dealers were paying four or five dollars an ounce for um, over above spot for silver eagles. Uh, so, and what he's saying here, I think, could be real, very much. And relevant to the paper markets, uh, but not necessarily the physical markets, which most of us are engaged. And by the way, I think that is a way to be engaged. I encourage folks to buy silver um, in the physical and nothing wrong with dabbling in it in the ETFs as well. There is some concern about the COMEX and silver deliveries this month. I've looked at some of the numbers, um, trying to digest them and trying to make them uh, to, to really get a, a handle around it. We're not at uh, critical mass yet there, from what I understand, but it is a concern. Um, and so that means if you are in the ETFs um, and uh, they can't deliver the silver, uh, that's going to be a problem for holders of ETFs, if that's the case. I'm not saying it is, and just something to be wary of there, um, because some of the numbers do look a little bit wonky, so to speak. Um, and most of us are anxious to welcome 2021. Those who, quote, invest in silver and silver stocks are likely to find next year particularly rewarding. And then he closes by saying it's time to buy silver. But, you know, um, I will say this, you know, as far as the daily noise and silver prices, I would say that that might be time to buy silver later because of that noise. In other words, we will see further dips. Um, I'm bullish on silver, too. And you've heard me talk about that. But I would encourage folks to not panic buy, ever to panic buy. Because even if you have 10 ounces of silver only in your stack, that's 10 ounces more than you had before, you're always um, providing a moment of protection and insurance, um, even if you have a little bit of silver. If you can afford to get more, uh, then fine. But uh, the thing is, to, as we prognosticate and... Um, we dabble in making predictions of what's going to happen the next year. And as I've mentioned in prior video, you know, I could be totally wrong. Um, I've been wrong before. I'm not a, um, an expert. Um, I see trends and I see where things are. I've, but from the experience that I've, I've witnessed, I feel pretty good about silver in 2021. And that says a lot for me because I typically am very, very much tampered in my view on silver because of the experience that we've seen with silver since 2011. You know, it has jaded a lot of people. And the thing is, is that could happen again. Um, uh, it very well could happen again. But I do think that this is a little bit different time. 
And but I'm also not predicting that silver is going to go to fifty dollars an ounce either. I'm not going to be that irresponsible. I think that's an irresponsible call. But there's people who are saying a hundred dollars silver as well too. Um, um, it's a matter of just being realistic about the metal and based off of where we are at economically and where things are with this pandemic and all that's involved with it. I do feel that silver is going to rise. Um, uh, but that does not necessarily and should not translate to you selling everything you have and buying silver or going all in on silver or going into debt to buy silver, especially if you can't afford to do so now. If you can't buy it now, you can always buy it later. There will be dips that will come along the way and and, and you can do it. And of course, when somebody says buy silver now with an explanation point on it, now always question when people make directives like that. Um, and whether they're well-meaning or not, because they just don't know. I don't know for sure. Um, I know I enjoy the silver I do have, and uh, when it does, the price does go up, and I bought an ounce of silver for a relatively cheap price before, I feel pretty darn good about it. But you know what? I have bought silver when it was, um, um, when it was 50, when it, when it was, the price was almost $50 an ounce. And I bought very little, but I did buy some. And that silver, I still, you know, hold on to. It's okay. It's, um, there it is. It's, it's one of those things where, you know, you buy a little bit. And when the price is high, you buy more, much more when the price is low. And, uh, if you, and it all averages it out in the end, in the long run. And that's the key, the long run. And so if you keep that in mind, then it's okay to buy silver now a little bit and it's okay to buy it later so i hope you found this video informative i'd like to extend a multitude of gratitude to you all for taking the time to watch this video and encourage you to please rate share comment and subscribe